on now. Yes, cool. Hi, good morning everyone and welcome to Middlesex University Summer Success Camp. Um, it's our last week of summer camp, but fear not, we still have some really amazing English, maths and video game design sessions for you. Um, our first session will be video game design run by Digital Schoolhouse and Michael. The session is called Eco Gamer and today what you'll be doing is focusing on the principles of games design. And the session will take place at 9.45 straight after this introduction. At 11.15 today, we'll have a math session, uh, a really interesting one, and Iran will focus on probability and Venn diagrams. After lunch, we have a really exciting film session from the lovely Ross from Chocolate Films. He will be giving us an introduction to editing, so make sure you tune into that at 11.15. Here's a short recap of today's timetable. So we've got games design session with Michael at 9.45. We're doing Eco Gamer, the principles of game programming. What you'll be doing today is designing a really uh, a sustainable games uh, box design for the games you guys have been working on throughout the last few weeks. At 11.15, Iram from, uh, to do a math session on probability and Venn diagrams. And at 1.15, we're doing a filmmaking session at the introduction to editing. Uh, and we'll also have the Q&A at the end of the session. We will also be recording these sessions. So if you miss anything and would like to watch something again, fear not because we will be adding all of these to our YouTube channels for you to access at any time. If you would like to share any of your work with us, then please visit the link on the screen. You will also find the link at the bottom of this YouTube video in the description box. Uh, press, the, uh, press the drop box and upload your work and please make sure you add your names. So we know who's submitting, uh, submitting their work. Also, if anyone has any video edits that they've made already that they want to share, please submit these onto Dropbox too, and we'll get Chopper Films to take a look at all those as well. But before we start, please can everyone log into Menti using the code 57755527 and uh, register uh, for everyone who's attending the session today. It's really important to register because whoever attends the most sessions at the end of this week will win uh, some really cool prizes, which can be seen on the screen here. So we have a few minutes until the video, uh, video game design session begins. Uh, so please head over to menti.com using that code 57755527 and Michael will be with you shortly.
Hi to anyone just joining us. If you missed the intro, please head over to Menti using the code 57755527 and register for today. And Michael from Digital Schoolhouse will be with us in about five minutes to begin his session. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Digital Schoolhouse's uh, Computer Games Development and Design uh, course. Uh, welcome. Good morning. This is in session eight out of nine. Our last one's going to be on Friday morning. So well done for making it this far. If you've been able to join us uh, throughout the whole thing. Um, before we continue, I just wanted to ask you guys again, just to go on to menti.com and sign in with the code uh, 57755257. Uh, make sure that you log in with your name and your school name to give yourself an opportunity to register, which means you'll then have a better opportunity of uh, winning some prizes at the end of this week. Um, and make sure that if there's any questions that you guys have got, uh, with regards to the work that we're doing today that you post those so that i can get fed back on those and then i can uh, address those questions uh, as, as soon as i can um one of the biggest questions that we had on monday session was if you didn't want to do planet simulator as the game that we're designing for this week uh, can you do a different game of your your own idea absolutely yes you can please do uh, that sounds absolutely fantastic to me uh, and please do make sure that at the end of the session guys you do click on the link uh, for Dropbox underneath the YouTube video uh, so that you can uh, upload any work that you've done so that I can see the fantastic work that you guys do. Now, uh, today we're going to continue our design work that we started uh, on Monday. And on Monday we were looking predominantly at branding a new computer game. Uh, the example that I took you through was Planet Simulator and you get you guys may have worked through that as well. Um, another, you could have gone for your own uh, idea of a computer game, it's absolutely fine. Um, but one thing, the three kind of things that we were focusing on uh, more specifically was the logo, uh, the color scheme and the tagline. Okay, we didn't get much time for the tagline, but again, we can look at that again today if we need to. Um, our objective today is to take uh, what we've done so far with our branding and to, uh, essentially start looking at producing a piece of um, documentation for it in terms of uh, actually making some packaging for this particular game, okay? So we're gonna design the front cover and back covers of the packaging of this game. Um, now, what we want to try to do guys, because we're talking about Planet Simulator specifically, or your own game designs, what we're talking about is producing something that's ecologically friendly or at least something that's friendly for the planet and doesn't cause too much of a carbon footprint or doesn't uh, cause too much waste product or plastic uh, product that sticks around for thousands of years after that game has been made. So what we're going to try to do today, guys, is design a new piece of uh, a new uh, documentation for putting our, our game in, a new uh, cassette or a new uh, a sleeve that we can put our game in to sell. But we do want to try to make, do our best to make sure that it's ecological it works with our environment and not against our environment so that's our our um, objective today okay um we're going to look at the carbon footprint of packaging and of games packaging and, and what the impact of that is and then we're going to look at the considerations needed when designing environmentally friendly packaging okay and then we're going to go ahead and do it for our games so um if you guys know Football Manager 2020, uh, Sega done really well on making sure that they produced environmentally friendly packaging. Um, Sega would like you to design a social media campaign that raises the awareness of how packaging could be designed to, to be more planet friendly. But also, uh, we're going to be designing the packaging around the new game of Planet Simulator. Okay. Now, Planet Simulator or your own game is going to be released on all platforms and all formats in two formats. So the first is going to use the standard uh, game packaging endorsed by the console manufacturers. And the second would be a smaller run that uses environmentally friendly packaging. Um, in essence, what we're going to be designing today is the environmentally friendly packaging of Planet Simulator or your own game. Um, and what we're going to do is kind of call that the limited edition run. Of, of, the, uh, of the packaging. This is the type of packaging that collectors or people that are really into their games like to get hold of, normally go for a higher price uh, and then end up being collector's items that they, they either put into a collection or later down the line can sell uh, for a tidy profit. Now, uh, what we're gonna look at specifically again today is producing some packaging for our, um, our computer game. Now, if you have a quick look on your screens, you can see uh, that this is the net that was designed for Football Manager 2020. Now, interestingly on this net, guys, what we've got is a, a few things going on here. Um, 
First off, you can probably recognize the front of this game. Okay, so here we go. We've got Football Manager 2020 at the top. We've got some uh, football uh, players or characters looking like they've won and all their fans that are super happy and excited around. We've got Sega's branding uh, for the publisher on the front. Looks like we've got the developer down here as well. We say that this particular item is designed for PC and Mac, uh, that we've got a Peggy rating or age rating of, of three. Um, and then here we've got the spine where... Uh, we include all of those main details as well, so that if it was on a shelf, you'd be able to access and see that information. Um, also, we've got the back. Okay, the back of our uh, design, which uh, includes a little bit more information. Sometimes on a book, it'd be called the blurb. Um, and it gives us a little bit more information about that particular computer game, breaks down some of the main key points or facts, uh, all of our different ratings and... Is it a, a single player game or a multiplayer game? Is it multiplayer split screen or is it multiplayer online? Uh, does it require any downloads, etc.? What type of controller do you need for it? What are the specifications of its running? Okay, so all of that information. And really, really, really importantly, guys, on the back is the barcode so that the retailer can scan that in order to make that sale. Now, above that, we'll see that we've actually got this picture here, which is upside down. Um, and it looks like it's a, a group of uh, perhaps football players and a coach that are doing some form of training. Um, why is that upside down? Well, because in the design, you would then most likely fold that down a bit like uh, our origami lesson on Friday last week. We're going to fold that down backwards. So that ends up as the inside cover of what we see for this outside cover. OK. And then finally, what we have on the right here is um, another kind of cover here and we see this this shape on the edge of it okay what that shape uh, denotes is that it's this section that we then cut across fold in and that acts as the sleeve that the cd actually goes into okay so we've got our front cover our spine our back cover the inside cover but then we actually have this sleeve that folds inwards and into the inside of our game disc uh, so that our game disc can sit inside that as a as a cover OK, so that's the kind of uh, the basic elements of what we're looking for with with packaging. Um, and yeah, this is the kind of thing that we're going to hope to achieve for ourselves and our own computer games today, uh, either for Planet Simulator or for your own game to, uh, game idea. OK, now, before we go into actually create our own uh, front covers or, or case designs, I'd like us just to do a little bit more research together on, on case designs and why uh, taking a more eco or environmentally friendly uh, perspective is really, really important today. OK, so let's have a quick look back at Football Manager uh, that we started looking at last time. Um, so, of course, what we can see straight away, guys, is that we've got the Football Manager logo. Uh, we've got some of the colors that are used. We've got a, a tagline here, which is playing for the planet. I'm not sure if that's used specifically for Football Manager or if that's part of what's sticking uh, all of these things together with regards to looking at making eco or ecologically or environmentally friendly packaging. OK, um, but what we had a brief look at last time, guys, is let's look at how Football Managers uh, adapted or evolved over the years. OK, so uh, starting all the way back in 2005. Um, all the way up to 2018, each iteration of this design has made an improvement or or fit better to the specific kind of fashions or trends in design at that point in time. OK, so let's talk about plastic. OK, now with our remaining physical sales, how can we minimize the impact on the environment? OK, so we're going to be essentially making two different types of sale. One of the types of sale now, nowadays is something that's becoming more and more popular and is hugely, hugely uh, beneficial for the environment. And that would be digital downloads and digital downloads uh, doesn't create any packaging whatsoever. It doesn't even create a disc for uh, your game to be run on. You simply download it from the Internet straight onto the hard uh, drive or flash drive of your of your particular device. So, um how can we minimize our impact on the environment? Well, the first uh, method would be to make people want to download the digital version of our game as opposed to purchase the actual physical copies in the shops. Um, however, if you're like me, I tend to prefer to get physical copies of games because if I finish them and I don't want to play them anymore, uh, that means that I can then sell that game and make a little bit of my money back. 
um, meaning that I've then got more money to pay on my, pay for my next game. Um, which means for physical copies of games for the time being, I hope it's something that sticks about because it does help me to go through more games and for gaming to be more affordable for me. Um, but what type of issues uh, do we have with regards to using plastic? Well, we have the carbon footprint, which typically means the amount of carbon dioxide is created in the manufacture, distribution and sale uh, of of that particular item. Okay, so how much uh, carbon dioxide is used in order to generate uh, plastic packaging? Um, sustainability, you know, we create plastic packaging out of oil uh, and it's well believed that today that oil is running out and that it's not something that we can sustain forever because uh, we're, on a, we're on a journey towards kind of running out of oil uh, and therefore perhaps it's not a sustainable resource to be using for our packaging. Um, is it recyclable? Well, some plastics are recyclable, but even if they are recyclable, plastics aren't actually particularly easy to recycle. Um, but the question is, even if you do create a uh, recyclable plastic, does it always find its way to the recyclable bin? Or does your recyclable bin always find its way to the recycling centre? Um, and again, there's, there's, there's questions around the recyclability of these types of things as well. And then finally, guys, pollutants. What chemicals were required by the factory in order to generate these plastic covers? Uh, what pollutants are generated by distribution on lorries, for example, uh, as they drive and deliver these around the world uh, and ships? And again, what types of pollutants are generated from the actual printing processes themselves as well? Is there anything that can be done to change that? So what we've got here, guys, is the constant evolution of the way that we're designing things and the way that things look on each iteration of our computer game to keep it up to date, to make people interested in continuing to purchase our game and for our company to continue making money. Now, when we have a look at our typical uh, gaming um, packaging, uh, we can have a paper inlay, uh, which will have our, uh, our kind of front cover, back cover blurb, and inside covers, etc., in, and we'd normally slip those into the top of one of our plastic cases. Okay, um, we'd have a cello wrap or cellophane wrap, okay, which is again made out of plastic that we'd undo uh, to know that it was new and it was preserved and it was looked after, and that when you you buy it, you you unwind it, rip it off, and therefore you've opened up your game. We might have a paper manual inside those, but again, they're not as they're not as a uh, uh, as popular as they used to be uh, back in the day that I used to buy games as a, as a young man. Um, nowadays, you're expected just to Google uh, how to do things in a game if you're stuck, and therefore the manual, if there is one, would typically be a safety thing, and theref therefore more legal reasons than, than user-friendliness reasons, okay? One thing I like about PlayStation, though, is PlayStation 4 tends to have just a paper, single piece of paper in there that always has all the controls as well, which I kind of appreciate when starting a new game. Uh, we have our disc. Okay, our optical disc, our CD, our compact disc, which is generally made from uh, plastics and metals, but mostly plastic. And again, coming back to that plastic case, guys, which is the fundamental biggest part of this packaging, this plastic case is created and used for distribution. Now, do we need a plastic case? Um, what do retailers really need? Um, so if we were to create something that wasn't plastic, what can we create that retailers, retailers can actually use? Now, will it look premium? Will it have shelf appeal if we go a different route? If we're not using the typical plastic that all the other games are using, um, are we making something that's still looking good and people are gonna wanna purchase it? Will it be robust? Will it be secure? Will it be strong? Will it play the role so that if we stack a thousand of these into a lorry, they won't crush each other. We'll be able to fit enough in there for the, the lorry to be uh, affordable to move them around the world or country. And can we use recycled as, as well as recyclable materials? Can we use both of these things? Well, let's have a look. Now, what we can do when looking at anything that's more ecological or environmentally friendly is start looking at the different uh, levels of the chain and how we can start changing things through the design process through these levels. OK, and this works in the gaming industry, but also in any industry on the planet that produces some sort of good. Um, so we can look at the distribution and retail feedback. We can we can ask our distributors or our shops to give us feedback on how things are selling and what's important to them on their shelves. 
uh, we can then look at our suppliers, okay? And going to our suppliers of all of these different materials, perhaps the plastics and the papers and the molds and the CDs that we purchase from them in order to sell our computer games, we can speak to those people and ask them what can change on their level as well with regards to our packaging. Uh, we can we can look at samples of these things. We can ask the suppliers for samples of different materials that are perhaps recyclable or already recycled uh, material materials. We will then make some considerations about what would be uh, good. We come up with designs. <clears throat> we then test, and then we go back to distribution and retail and ask them again for feedback. Uh, <clears throat> we go. Sorry, excuse me. We go to distribution, uh, we ask them for feedback. We say, were you able to fit the same number onto your lorries? Were you able to distribute them at the same speed? Were they the same cost to distribute or were they slightly more? Um, and to the retailers, were customers interested in making those purchases? Were they buying? Were they, were they selling off the shelves? Uh, really, really important things because fundamentally, guys, we want to make the world a better place. But as an organization that is responsible for itself and for its uh, employees, we need to make a profit and we need to make money so that we can continue to pay everyone that worked on this computer game. Now, um, what can change? Well, maybe we could look at a design that closer represents this one. OK, this design here is 100 percent recycled, recycled and recyclable card. You can see from before, guys, when I was speaking about the fold overs here, we've got these uh, the, the coach, it looks like, and the football players training uh, off in some way. And then we've got this inlay here. Actually, no, this is holding the uh, this looks like this is going to hold the manual whilst the other side looks like it's going to be there's a there's a slit cut so that we can put the put the uh, the CD into that. Now, this is 100 percent recycled and recyclable cool recyclable card, uh, widely recyclable uh, shrink wrap on there, all printing minus the disc, uh, water and vegetable ink. So that's amazing. We're not using chemicals in order for the printing and it may well work out cheaper. 100% um, recyclable and uh, manual, which is fantastic as well. And the disc is recyclable via specialists, which it's a bit of a reach there to say that the disc is recyclable, but hopefully, guys, we're not looking to throw this disc away anytime soon anyway, at least up, up until the end of uh, this console's life cycle and then a little bit more for those people that like to play retro games. This disc can be thrown away, but hopefully this disc is only going to be thrown away somewhere uh, responsible where a specialist can recycle it. Now, um, Miles, Miles Jacobson has written uh, about the uh, football manager game and what his kind of thoughts and feelings have been on it. Uh, I'm just going to read this out just to have a quick think about um, kind of ways in which we can have a look at uh, being more environmentally friendly or just kinder to the planet. OK, hi, everyone. As you've hopefully seen over the past few years, we at Sports Interactive aren't scared of delving into subjects that affect the world with our football manager series of games. The football is the footballers having the courage to come out as gay in the game through stimulating Brexit, uh, through stimulating Brexit via the charities we promote with ad hoardings and the donation that goes to War Child for each PC game that we sell. We are lucky to have a voice and to use it to tackle some difficult subjects that need wider discussion. OK. So in this letter from Miles Jacobson, he's talking about how we can use our uh, computer games, but also any uh, product in order to launch values and change for the future in order to promote a better world for everyone, not just on environmental change, but on all sorts of different uh, campaigns or, or uh, freedoms that anybody should be able to celebrate in this world. Here we have a collection of different uh, a different kind of generations of uh, interest and and hype and uh, the media has taken uh, some of the stuff that Football Manager has done, um, talking about Miles Jacobson calling for an end to plastic packaging. OK, uh, talking about Football Manager 2020 will be released with a re recyclable case cover. OK, not the traditional way of doing things, trying new things. Um, something amazing about this type of project, guys, if you're working on, on creating something that is different to everybody else and is sustainable and is aimed at making the world a better place, is that luckily 
the media will get hold of it. They'll want to run the story themselves because it's interesting. And that will generate exposure for your brand in your game. So actually, you kind of get paid by the fact that you're doing something different and doing something good and kind because um, people want to know about these things, which means you're actually helping your own business to be known. So what we're looking to do, guys, is to create 100% recycled packaging. OK, uh, we're looking to change uh, change to dimensions. To, so the dimensions of the plastic case are ever so slightly different uh, and not only to be recycled, but also to be recyclable so that these have come from recycled materials and that we can also recycle the materials themselves. OK, by doing so, they saved 20 tons of plastic. Uh, there was less fuel needed to transport them because you could fit more into a lorry or a shipping container. Um, there were fewer pol pollutants used in the in the manufacturing process. It did cost 22 cents per item more to manufacture, which is a lot of money. But was it worth it? Did they actually still make a profit regardless whilst also making the world hopefully a better place? I think the answer to that question is yes. And they also raised awareness. They made a statement and said, we're going to do things differently because this is the way that things should be done. Um, looking at the uh, carbon dioxide equivalency, which essentially is a measure of how much carbon dioxide is generated per unit, uh, before with the plastic casing, uh, we're looking at 191 grams of CO2 produced per unit. And on the new Football Manager 2020, you're only looking at 91 grams of carbon dioxide uh, equivalents. Uh, produced per unit. So you've actually reduced it by more than 50%, which is a fantastic reduction. Um, so what would that look like? Well, actually, the production of this particular case is equivalent uh, to the, the, the rearing and growth and distribution of three tablespoons of oats. So just to give you an example of how closely related those two things are. So uh, I don't want to keep going on with this because I'm conscious of the time and I'd like us to start our design pro process. So what I'm going to do, guys, is we're now going to have a quick look at Planet Simulator ideas that we came up with in the last session. And you guys are going to hopefully go back to your previous piece of work that you've done for us on Monday. But if you've not done, if you weren't with us on Monday, not to worry, because you guys can uh, just work from what I've got on on my screen here. Now, before we continue, guys, and whilst we just have a quick look and I talk through what I did last time, um, just make sure, guys, that as a minimum, you've got some paper, a pencil, and a ruler will be useful for us today, or anything with a straight hard edge that you can use as a ruler that's just laying around, okay? Um, I'm just gonna quickly go through what I did last time. So if you guys need to go run away and grab that stuff, please do. Um, if you're not using uh, paper and pens, instead you're using uh, some of the uh, software on your computer, for example, paint or any piece of design software fundamentally you could use, um, please do open that up now and create a new document because we're going to start moving forwards and generate a, a new piece of packaging. OK, now, whilst you guys run away and get that set up, I'm just again going to uh, have a quick look. Uh, some of the things or design choices that I made on Monday uh, for Planet Simulator so that if you haven't got your own choices or design choices, you can work f with me through mine. OK, um, so what did we say? We said that some of our colours, well, because we wanted this to be, in essence, environmental or, or green, because our planet is fundamentally green. Um, we're looking at the, the, the greenery of our planet and perhaps the oceans as well as our main colours for Planet Simulator because, guys, they are the main colours of our planet and this is what typically the colours of a healthy planet would look like. Um, do we have any contrasting colours that we can introduce? Well, yes, we do, actually. We've got these warmer colours that are on the opposite end, OK? If these are cooler, cooler colours on this side, which are typically blues and greens, um, the types of colours you might see in the sky, you know, at the North Pole or, or, or things like that. But to contrast that, we've got these really passionate, fiery, hot colours down here uh, that might actually add as a lovely contrast to some of our colouring later on. OK, um, again, I've not come to a final decision on which of these I'll use, but I do know for sure I'm going to be using these. Also, it's not very complex for me, guys, in, with regards to what colour scheme I'm going to pick, because I'm using coloured pens. I only have a very limited number of colours I can choose from anyway. So for those of you doing this design on a computer, you've obviously got a much wider palette of colours that you can pick from. But 
please do pick some colors that you're going to be using for our packaging, okay? Um, we also spoke about logos, guys, and we went through an iterative process of producing different logos, just based on some research we might be doing online or looking at a website that we called the Noun Project, uh, which was helping us to uh, do a little bit of research on those types of things that we might relate to both uh, our planet, but also to simulation as well. And uh, I came up with a design like this, which was our planet in which we were trying to grow uh, plants and uh, keep it nice and healthy and sustainable. But also coming back to that simulator aspect of our computer game, we had this control to show that we were simulating the growth and, and maintenance of this planet by using our computer game controller. OK, so what does that mean for us today? Well, what we're going to need to do, guys, is take some of the inspiration that we've made from there. But we're actually going to move forwards and start to generate our own game uh, idea. Now, the first thing that I want you guys to do today is to actually have a go at drawing out the map that we can see on our screens now, okay? What we're gonna need to do, guys, is draw the plan or the map of uh, this particular design. Um, this net, actually is the better word for it, this net that we would use uh, is gonna be used for our next, our next design. So I'm gonna probably just go for a PlayStation game um, this could be this specific net that you see on your screens now would be useful for PlayStation, uh, Xbox and PC, anything that uses an optical disc. Uh, however, if you want to design one for Switch, you might just need to make some minor adjustments to make it thinner uh, so that it's not as wide as what our typical, um, just not the same size, essentially, as what our typical kind of disc, uh, disc cover is. Now, all I'm going to do, guys, and... Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. OK, I'm just going to start drawing the plan onto my uh, piece of paper so that I'm able to start designing this myself. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect, guys. You're not going to be marked on, uh, you know, the actual size specification that you've generated for your game design. But I'm going to make it nice and big so I've got lots of lovely room to use. Using my ruler, which is absolutely essential, guys, if you want to do this neatly. But if you've not got a ruler, just find something that's uh, got a decent straight edge on it so that you can use it as a ruler. I'm not measuring anything now. I'm being quite um, relaxed with this, but that's okay. Let's bring this down. And actually, I'm going to take the liberty of just creating this uh, this divide, this kind of uh, manual tray. Got to remember that through the middle of the whole thing is the spine. Okay, so that when that's on a kind of bookshelf storage, people can still read what the contents of this game will be. And yeah, actually, I'm going to create this shape rather than just another rectangle at the side of this. So, what do we say? It's not as, as fully as wide yet. It's fine. Quite worked out well. Again, just roughly, guys, make that up. And hopefully what you guys can see I've produced is uh, the kind of similar plan um, to what we've been given on screen. So I've got my, my bottom section. This is going to be my front cover, my back cover, my inside front and back, which will need to be uh, reversed upside down so that we can design that section. And then we've got our flap on the inside, which will contain uh, what was probably going to be the manual for our computer game. If we wanted to be really ecological friend, uh, or, or really environmentally friendly, guys, you probably just scrap the idea of a manual altogether and tell people to go online to access that manual. But we'll, we'll keep it in the designs for now, and then we'll see if uh, we can scrap that at a later design stage. Okay. Now, what are we trying to get across today? What are the really important design considerations that we need to make? Because uh, I can't just go and draw something really beautiful and pretty on this. I need to, there's certain conventions or things that I really need to stick to uh, in order to come up with a good uh, game cover. Um, what I'd like to do is just discuss some of those things. Um, and actually we can do a bit of research on those things also uh, to make sure that we're, you know, 
producing all of those things that we need to produce. Um, so let's have a little think. What are the things that we need to include on the design of our cover? Well, obviously, what we can begin by looking at is uh, having a quick look at um, the things that have been included on the football manager design. Just having a quick look at that front and back cover as well as the spine, uh, something that's very, very obvious throughout is that it has the Sega logo. So actually, I'm just going to start, guys, by, you know, it's not going to be the best looking version ever. Uh, I most likely will know Sega a great deal better than what you guys will because uh, I grew up with a Sega Mega Drive. I was one of those guys. Whereas most of you growing up today won't probably have ever been exposed to a, uh, a Sega console. I'm just going to write Sega. And I'd recommend, guys, you do the same for yours. Write Sega in the kind of bottom corner of your design because we know that although it's our game idea and design, it's Sega that's our publisher. Sega that's paying us the money to get all of these things done. Yeah. Um, and then coming back onto the left at the bottom of the front cover design, guys. Um, what other things do we have to include? Almost legally, do we have to include? Well, we should probably be thinking about including our PEGI rating. Now, for anybody that remembers this specification from last time, our PEGI rating, we were told, was three. So, I'm going to include that in the bottom left corner so that we're making sure that we've got them really, really important aspects done. Now, luckily, because I've got my colors, I can actually already begin adding a bit of color to that. And it's just rough. This is just a first design. And again, if you guys are using computers, you know, you're not going to be nowhere near as messy as what I've been in, uh, in doing your, your design bits. I've just been quite quick and quite rough to begin with. There you go, that would do. Uh, what else needs to be included? Well, actually, um, something I was looking at recently uh, was what the design of the kind of the new PlayStation 5 uh, covers are going to look like. Okay, because um, PlayStation 5 is going to release soon. Uh, and I think that Sony has already revealed the way that they want their PlayStation 5 game cases and color schemes to look like. Um, so let's have a little look at those. And, and if you guys wanted to make PlayStation, you're absolutely able to do so today. But you don't have to do PlayStation. You can do any. So this is the new, uh, I think this is actually, I don't know if this is a whole new game in its own right. I think this might be a DLC for the Amazing Spider-Man game. Uh, or Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4, but this is the kind of design of what that that new uh, that new PlayStation designs will look like. So, what have we got here? Well, actually, lovely. This is nice and simple for us. Uh, it looks like the only thing that really marks this out as a PlayStation game is obviously that that very iconic blue casing. Uh, but I'm not going to be using that blue plastic casing. But I can still use the convention at the top of the uh, PS5 logo, the PlayStation logo on the spine and at the top of my design. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, do my absolute best to copy this PlayStation logo. Not the easiest thing. Not the easiest thing to draw. 
again, just need to keep it rough. Just need a rough idea of what we're making here. Wow. And that is not a good wow. That is just a wow. This has just happened. All right. Just going around mine in black pen to make it more bold because. So if yours looks like an absolute dog's dinner like mine, don't worry about it, guys. This is just your design stage. We're just coming up with rough ideas. But what's important, guys, even if you're not doing PlayStation, if you're doing Switch, if you're doing PC, if you're doing Xbox, stick to the conventions that they already have. Oh, great. Not great, but it would do. We get the idea. And really, I should be doing the same over here. Let's just do this one quicker. I'm not going to mess about on this one forever. That would do. Right. So here we go. I've got my PlayStation 5 kind of uh, branding on there to show that this is a PlayStation game that I'm creating. Uh, we've got the publisher of Sega on there. We've got our uh, Peggy rating on there. You don't see one on your screen currently because it looks like they've not decided uh, what the particular Peggy rating is going to be. Uh, but what other things do we really need to produce in order for this to stick to the conventions? Uh, we need the barcode. Really, really important, guys, that we're putting a barcode on the back cover. So I'm just going to build that in. And why am I doing all of these things, guys, first? Well, because these have to go on the top layer. Uh, all of the lovely artwork and things that I'm about to produce are less important than these things that are completely standardised and almost legally required in order for these games to be fitting uh, the standards expected by retailers. Now... Sometimes you can break out of this with your game designs by uh, instead producing covers or steel books or anything like that. But for the time being, guys, we're just going to stick to the conventions of producing the barcode. Okay. So, Peggy Rating, publisher. PlayStation 5 iconography that's important and our barcode for our retailer. To an extent, guys, I'm kind of done. Uh, this is essentially what everybody's PS5 uh, net should look like for their design for their particular computer game, uh, which means I can then start going forwards and designing all the different key aspects of what I'd like my actual cover to look like. Okay, so let's just come back to some of the stuff that we came up in the idea stage. I know that I've got this, this logo. Do I want this logo to be the full front cover of this game? Uh, I don't see why not. Uh, that's going to make things really nice and simple for me. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Maybe I want a more realistic image of a planet uh, or some, some kind of, uh, you know, galaxy image now one of the benefits that those people using a computer will have at this point is that um, they can very very easily uh, use their computer to start finding really really good images that they might want to start using for their designs okay uh, so obviously I'm working on paper assuming that that's all that we've got but if you guys are using computers you're going to be much better at this task than I am. And you're going to be able to go away and actually really start designing these things to look really, really good very quickly. Um, what I might want to do if I had access to a computer today uh, was go away and have a look on Google and image search uh, what a galaxy looks like. Because 
uh, I found this image here, which is a really, really lovely, okay, it's actually from uh, a piece of art from Amazon. Now we shouldn't be stealing images uh, left, right and center. We should be crediting where we're taking images from. And obviously in an actual game design, guys, we can't just take images and start selling them as our own. But what I would like to point out is that if you guys are coming up with rough designs for the beginning of your, uh, your piece of work, um, you can start saving images that you might want to use in your design. Okay. And what might that look like for me uh, using my design on a piece of paper? Well, what I can quite easily do guys is uh, just say that that particular galaxy image, which was really, really lovely. Um, I might actually just say, I want to use that galaxy image here, or I can just kind of do a rough version of it uh, onto the inside cover of my, my design. So I'm just going to actually write galaxy image. Yeah. And then just block that out to show that this entire area has been accounted for or a galaxy image. Again, for those people using computers, you can probably just paste that in and use it so that it looks better than mine. Um, if I'm gonna be doing that for the inside of the manual uh, folder, I also want to be using that galaxy image the rest of the inside cover as well so very very quickly guys we're actually storming through our design process here because we've actually technically done the vast majority of our design already and obviously this galaxy image is not a set of lines but for the purpose of my design i'm going to say that i can go away and collect a galaxy image at a later point which means i don't need to be an artist to do this piece of work guys i just need to have the ideas and make them clear normally we'll pass this over to an actual designer uh, that's been through some form of art university or school uh, really good at these things and therefore can put that together for you and make it look good so what's the next stage what's the next step um well, I need to actually start thinking about what the front cover of my game's gonna look like. Uh, I'll tell you what I will then move on to do is I'm probably gonna now start speaking about or at least show you guys uh, where I could include that icon that we created last time, which is our kind of logo for the game. One place you most likely would definitely wanna see your logo is on the spine. Uh, and again, because logos are quite small and quite clear and very visual, a spine would be a fantastic place to start including a logo on. So I'm actually going to pick the bottom of my spine. Uh, let's just draw. And this is really, really small, guys. So you're going to have to look really closely at what I'm doing here. But whilst my game is up on shelf somewhere. There it goes. Tiny. But you may well see. your logo kind of included down there. like that. Well, you're also going to need the name, the name of your, uh, your game on the, on the, uh, spine. So I'm going to include the name of mine on my spine.
Oh, Planet Simulator. But really now, guys, all we've got to do is these two these two different side sides of the front and the back cover. The rest of our design is complete. Okay. So what types of things do we want to include? And I'm hoping, guys, as I work through mine, you're actually also working through yours at the exact same time. Uh, you see how very quickly I've designed most of this design just by using conventions and, and by saying this is the type of thing that I'd like to be included at this point here. Uh, what I'm going to actually think about now is what I can put on my front cover. Well, I'm actually going to stick essentially as closely as I can to my logo, uh, except perhaps I'm going to do it a little bit more realistically. And again, I don't need to be an artist to do this, guys, but I can, uh, I don't know, I can have perhaps a, a, a globe of some sort. Or actually, I probably want to have the title here as well. So let's have this globe. There we are. That'll do. It's quite circular. Uh, and let's have Planet Simulator written around. There you go, that would do. Again, it's not completely neat. And for those people using a computer, it's going to be much easier for you to do. But I'm just keeping it rough because I'm just doing this on paper. The reality of the fact is, guys, it's going to be made on the computer. Okay. So I've got Planet Simulator here. Uh, probably want to draw some kind of uh, more definitions on my, on my planet of some sort. So let's have Europe swing down here. Uh, I think that's it, right? Let's have the continent of Africa. Uh, let's have Great Britannica uh, across the across the pond. Let's have the U.S. of A, and then South, the continent of South America. And then that would do for the time being, I think. Again, I can put a bit of color in here in order to bring this thing to life. So let's do so uh, this time around as well. Maybe we want something a little bit more realistic. So maybe we can start actually depicting the kind of sub-Saharan. Wow, this is a bit, a bit skewed, but that's okay. The sub-Saharan uh, deserts. Some of the more lush greenery of our planet, away for them from that central equator. Again, please bear in mind that this is a very wonky equator I've created, but again, it's an abstract model. We spoke about what abstract meant, which was to take away some detail or leave out details that didn't seem completely necessary. I'm sure there's more desert than that in Africa than um, what I'm doing, but it's okay. And this is just my design, guys. I don't know what you guys are coming up with for your own. I'm just showing you that, you know, these things can really start to come to life. The more layers and the more conventions we stick to, the more we add on top. Of course, we have our ocean.
Again, maybe we can incorporate that image control being in some way responsible for the, the goings on of that planet. Using your own imaginations, guys, and your own ideas to produce something that works for you. Now, where we've spoken about design through iteration and producing lots and lots and lots of different versions of something, this process would potentially take, you know, between weeks and months of, of producing a front cover that everyone agreed uh, represented the game to its kind of best. I put that lovely galaxy image that we've decided upon. And then finally, guys, we've got this back section as well, which we need to complete, we need to finish. Uh, what's the deal going to be there? So again, uh, I've run out of ideas for this back section, so that doesn't matter. You can run out of ideas. That's a normal, normal way to feel, normal thing to do. But what have they done on some of our inspiration? Let's have a look at the football manager. Hmm, I wonder where I've got the idea of all this purple from. But what have they done? So they've got an image of the game uh, and essentially a bulleted list of some of the features. Uh, your adventure in football management begins here. Join in the squad for the season. You've got development centre, club vision, playing the time pathway. Every decision counts. And then some of the more technical information I was talking about earlier on. So what can I potentially include on my one? Well, coming back, since I've run out of ideas, let's come back to my idea generation that I've begun last time. Well, actually, guys, we were talking about some of these themes and ideas when we were talking about survival. Uh, we're talking about you're in charge. We're talking about, uh, you know, different effects on the earth. So actually, we've, we've got his choice, decisions and survival. So let's let's think about those as three kind of main main kind of themes. Why don't I try dividing this up? into three sections, I suppose. Let's try that. So let's have an image here. Image down here. Let's have an image over here. Yeah, so you choose the fate of Earth. Whoops. Proper noun. So you choose the fate of Earth and there can be this idea that, you know, we've got our Earth or maybe we can have one of the Earths which is uh, totally spent, maybe even on fire. Yeah, and then we've got this lovely other Earth which looks absolutely lush with plants. Plants and greenery and sea and everyone's happy and alive. And maybe you choose that fate as part of this computer game. Okay. Maybe we talk about the fact that in this game you are in charge and lots of these decision making situations. Are things that you as the user are going to go through yourself? Again, these are title off the, off the bat ideas, guys. I have absolutely no idea really where I want to go with this, but you never know until you put pen to paper and start creating something. Uh, and then the final one, if you're in charge and you choose the fate of the earth, maybe we're going to come back to the talk that help earth survive humans. I remember seeing a funny image before where the, 
the earth is uh, looking really worn out and down in the dumps and it's got a big thermometer coming out of its mouth because of global warming and and another planet which is playing the role of doctor says i'm sorry to let you know that you've got humans uh as a joke to suggest that it's us that are the damaging factor on this planet and maybe there are things that we can do to help the earth survive and therefore ourselves so help survive this human infestation and again maybe we're talking about managing large numbers of people you know the jobs the education the sustainability of resources the distribution of resources the way in which regulated or unregulated markets work cooperation between nations I spoke in the idea phase of perhaps managing war. That'll do. And then again, guys, you can have more facts about your game down here. And I don't need to include all of those things. Don't need to write them out. But at this stage, we're talking about design. And then some of the more typical things that we might expect to see with regards to info. Okay, this is a one player game. Does it require a, a Nintendo, sorry, not Nintendo, PlayStation Network? Does it require downloads, etc., etc.? All of our information can go here. Now, again, typically at the bottom, guys, we're looking at having publisher credits, sound credits, different engines uh, for the actual computer game creation, the sounds, etc., what might be credited at the bottom section here. And again, in here, we might have even more further details or expansions coming up, downloadable content, etc. There you go, there's design number one uh, for Planet Simulator. For me, that would be design number one. I really want to get across, guys, whilst you guys are working on your own designs, okay, is that we've got three things fundamentally going on. We've got the net that we're using, which is an environmentally friendly design of using only really recyclable and recycled materials. Uh, we have got the conventions of a, of a computer game case, which include a spine with our publisher, our platform, and then... Uh, our barcodes, PEGI ratings, and obviously the design stuff that we come up with. And that final third thing that we produce are all the design decisions that we want to show our brand, to show our game, to get people interested in making that purchase. Okay. Now, hopefully you guys were able to use a better coloring technique than I was, or perhaps you guys have used computers and therefore yours looks much better than mine. But what I hope that I've got across today, guys, are all of those decisions that need to go into generating and creating uh, packaging for any particular computer game okay the same practices guys will exist uh, across the board for any product design uh, we go through three things always we start with our net uh, and what we've decided with our kind of suppliers of that particular net what our shape is going to look like for our design we then go on to create the things that are convention uh, the playstation logos the publisher logos the peggy ratings the uh, barcode so that retailers can code these items and sell them quickly and easily and then finally we go into our design ideas where we bring in our branding we bring in our color schemes we've got uh, perhaps some of our slogans maybe those three things that I came up with on the blurb or back cover were slogans for the game and obviously the game name as well Planet Simulator in this case okay <laughs> Uh, I hope that that's helped uh, enlighten you guys with some of the things that actual designers go through in industry and in some of the different nets and hurdles we have to cross over in order to go into the next stage or design idea. Uh, what I've essentially created today could be described more as a wireframe uh, for this game. Like I said, because I'm not an artist, uh, I can still be responsible for design, but I'll then take this sketch or wireframe design idea and hand this over to a designer that's worked really hard on perfecting all of those real wonderful arty skills that they've they've produced. Okay, um, that kind of brings us to the end of this session, guys. Can I just remind uh, everybody uh, to make sure that they do absolutely join uh, Menti? 
uh, to make sure that they uh, are contributing on on Menti. Um, let me just, sorry, I've just lost the code and I just need to go and find it again. Uh, let's just quickly pull that up. So the code guys for Menti today, uh, just to make sure that you've got any questions, they can be published on there. Uh, the code today is uh, 577552. Okay. And just to share one final thing with you all guys, just looking at this week's work. Um, so far, we've learned about creating brand identity. We've spoken about carbon footprint and we have looked at some of the considerations needed when designing environmentally friendly packaging. Okay. On Friday, for our last session uh, for Digital Schoolhouse, this kind of gaming uh, introduction for design and development. We're going to be looking at the audience and purpose when making a social media campaign, okay, and how we can create a social media campaign for a specific platform. So that's what we'll look through next time. Do not forget, guys, take photographs of your work. Please put them onto the Dropbox link, uh, which is at the bottom of this YouTube video. Or if you've created in Paint or any design software, please do take a copy image of that. And please do upload that on the, to the Dropbox so that I can see the fantastic stuff that you guys produce. And thank you very much for joining me again. I'm Michael and I will see you on Friday for Friday's final session for the uh, Middlesex Summer School. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you very much, Michael, for that wonderful session. Uh, remember, like you said, if you do want to submit any work, the Menti code for that is 577552. Seven and uh, you can also on there let us uh, let us know what skills you have improved today. Uh, sorry, submitting works on the Dropbox. Uh, the next session will be our math session at eleven fifteen, run by Iram, which will be focusing on probability and Venn diagrams. So see you shortly. Thank you very much. Bye.